Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And with three weeks left to go until Essence Bill, it's time to finally do a video of some of the games that I'm very excited about coming out from there. October 5th through October 8th, over on BGG, you can see their listing, the current list of the games available. There's 914 titles currently announced of games you can go ahead and check out, a buy to demo, all of those things. I did a bunch of these videos for Gen Con. I will not be doing three full videos like I did last. I think I did three full videos, 15 games apiece for 45 total games. But... I wanted to do 15 games for Ashton, but I also did not want to repeat any of the ones we already talked about uh, uh, from the Gen Con videos. So these are going to be 15 entirely new games. Well, not entirely new. Some of them I may have talked about in two back or not to back, so who knows back when. It, mostly new games. None of these 15 were in my Essen lists. The first five that I'm going to go into are five that I know a little bit less about and, and or in some cases I'm just a little bit less excited because, well, we'll get into them. So I'm going to have the first five are a little bit separated and then we'll have a top ten, a top ten ranked in order of how much I personally am looking forward to them. This is not a 15 games to demo, a 15 games to buy, 15 hottest games of Essen. These are 15 games that I, Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co., just kind of caught my fancy, caught my attention. I'm interested in for one reason or another, whether the art, the design, or the mechanics, all of those, I know a little bit about some of them and not a lot about any of them. Let's go ahead and dive into these, starting off. Oh, and before we do, as usual, you can go ahead and browse your own. You can go ahead and head over to this this list, this link down below. I'll have a link to everything and timestamps. And you can see over here, 914 titles. You can sort them, you can filter them, you can filter for only English language, you can filter for demo, for buying, for any of those. If you are going to Essen, enjoy. I sadly will not be there this year. I'm hoping for next year. We'll find out next year. We'll see how that plays out. But in the meantime, starting off with number 15, which is Rats of Worcester. Coming from Cranial Creations over here, the designers, the company, those are the main reasons to pay attention to this one. Although I will say the theme, while being unique, isn't fully pulling me in. You're managing a bunch of rats as you try to deal with artifacts and food and all these various things as you wander around over here. The game looks intriguing as far as like the actual cards and mechanics and Simone Luciani is involved in Cranial Creations, which means you know there's going to be a lot of crunchy decision making going on in this game. But I will say, for me, this one's kind of in the, the maybe camp only because the art and aesthetics of the game aren't pulling me in quite as much. The theme is unique, no question about that, but I'm torn between kind of being appealed to by the interesting theme versus not being pulled into it as much. So uh, the Rats of Wistar is one of the ones that was it was initially in my top 10 and I kind of kept moving it out the more I looked into it. It just, the cover had me, the, the concept had me, but elements of it started to lose me a little bit. I still think it's a game I'll likely enjoy, these types of games I tend to enjoy, but I'm not as intrigued by the theme as I first was, which is why it's my number 15. Coming in at number 14, we have one that does intrigue me, but I'm worried I just won't like it as much, which again, that's why it's my number 14 over here, which is Portals. Portals from Crowd D Games, the cover art pulls me in, the components over here, these components over here, these little boards, this abstract strategy game with these little bits and pieces over here, it looks beautiful and that uh, that could be a good thing. It also looks like it could be chaotic. Abstract strategy games can fall into a vein where sometimes you have too much going on and that can actually take a little bit away from the experience. There's a game from, oh my gosh, there's a game that I can't remember the name of it and I can't remember the publisher. I know the publisher, oh my, I'm blanking completely. It's going to bother me. There's a different abstract strategy game that I very much enjoy that had a degree of chaos to it to the point that while at first it intrigued me, it pushed me away a little bit the more I played it over time because it, it, there's a little too much going on. And so I'm a little bit torn about this one. But the, the aspect of managing portals, being a wizard, collecting magic keys, all of that thematically intrigues me. Art components intrigues me. Uh, the publisher, Crowd D Games, they put out a bunch of good games. It's more that I'm just not a 100% sure. The solo puzzle, the solo crunch, crunchy puzzle to this game, all of that intrigues me. But you combine a weight rating of two, which is good, but not necessarily amazing in terms of the complexity, combined with the amount of things going on, and I wonder or worry whether portals might be more intriguing or drop more chaotic. It's one I definitely hope to try at some point, but that's where we are as far as portals go. Then we have over here for number 13, we have Evil Corp. Coming from to you, coming to you from the book to you, uh, Evil Corp is going to have you trying to basically terrify two different villages, or terrify villages in the game. So you're trying to become the new CEO of Evil Corp, trying to terrify various villages. Again, unique theme, as that has me intrigued. Uh, the concept of the game has me intrigued. The idea of the fact that, you know, either the team play or the just being the first player to go ahead and terrify your, uh, to terrorize your second village. All that seems intriguing, but also seems a bit tongue-in-cheek, which is why, again, this is my number 12, 13, 13, I think we're up to so far. So intrigued, but also not yet 100% sold on Evil Corp. 
At number 12, we have Ni Nikojima. Nikojima is one that I have, this one I remember seeing when I was on crowdfunding. And the concept of this is dexterity based. It's dexterity based in the sense that you have this little pole over here, and you're trying to stack these these to these wires and these cats, and you're trying to make sure that they don't hit each other. And so you're constantly building this entangling web as you dangle cats and various things while trying to fulfill different goals based on the dice you roll. So the puzzle looks cool. The concept looks cool. The game looks like it could be fun. The one aspect that holds me back in this one is any dexterity game. Traditionally, these games don't last in my collection. They intrigue me, they they pull me in initially, but they do not always last in my collection, which is why I'm not yet 100% sure on Nikojima, which is why it's in my number 12. Then at number 11 over here, we have Brixels 1893, a re-implementation of Brixels, well, 1893, just an additional name on top of it. This one is a worker placement game that just looks beautiful and is well rated. This game, the first original game, already has a, a history behind, already has a degree of, 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 you know, reputation behind the game. And this is a re-implementation of that game, bringing you beautiful production over here. Look at this board over here. Everything here just looks amazing as far as the overall. It's, it's you know, it's actually pretty hard. As I was going through this list over here, putting together these games, I found that when looking at Euros, and there are a lot of Euros on this list. Sometimes I look at a, you know, another Euro board and I'm like, nothing about this pulls me in. There's just so many games out there that look so just like, sure, components, places, all these things, and other boards I look at and something about them pulls me in. And I don't know why it is one versus the other, but for me, this one looks like a puzzle that I want to solve. I don't know as much about this one, which is the only reason it's lower down on my list, but I am certainly intrigued by it and would love to give this one a shot. And with that, before we go ahead and dive into our before we go ahead and dive into the top 10 over here, just a word from our sponsor of the week, which our sponsor of the week is more, well, me. Just a reminder to those, I don't do this all the time, but I'm going to start probably trying to do it like once or twice a month on a more regular basis. But a reminder to you that I do have a Patreon. You can find the link to it down below. But if you do find that you get value from the channel, value from the content, I would appreciate if you, you know, consider subscribing, liking, sharing, becoming a Patreon, all of that. Over on Patreon, I do regular weekly videos. I almost always have at least one video a week, sometimes two, as well as a schedule for the week, the occasional, you know, channel or life update combined with an unfair and unbalanced series where I try to convince you not to back crowdfunding campaigns in a way that many people have said saves them far more than their membership money for a Patreon just based on backing just one fewer game here, one fewer game there, saves you more than enough. The trade-off though is, well, you don't get the game, so that is the trade-off there. But either way, let's go ahead and continue with the top 10, starting off with Art Society for Mighty Boards. Art Society, Art Society for Mighty Boards is, well, it looks a little bit on the lighter side, which is the only reason this is my number 10. I worry that this one might be one of those games that visually pulls me in, but mechanically isn't necessarily as satisfying. In the game, you're going to be bidding on various pieces of artwork, you're going to be mounting it on your wall, and this already looks beautiful, the way they have this set up for the pieces all to connect together on the wall, the little bits and pieces, all that, that looks intriguing. It's a double layer player board, and then you increase your prestige, you score, all of that. It looks intriguing. My only concern is that it might be a little on the lighter side, but it looks beautiful. And I mean, I like bidding in general. I like the concept of the laying things together in a way that optimizes their score. So it could be another Cascadia type game for me, or it could be a game that I enjoy and find a little bit lighter than what I'm personally looking for. Ultimately, time will tell on that. But that's going to be number 10, which is Modern Art, Art Society. That's the one. Wasn't it called? Was it originally called Modern Art Society? Why did I feel that was the original name? Am I just losing my mind? Am I just confusing modern art and high society? Very possibly. With that, we're going to move on to our number nine over here. Number nine is Welcome to Collector's Edition. This is going to be, again, be a, a, an Essence Build release, and the, this is the Collector's Edition of Welcome to, as we said, which is going to combine everything that's been put out for Welcome to to date, along with some new content as well. It's going to be a complete reworking of the classic game, a brand new expansion for Roswell, a rethemed expansion for American Dream, a bunch of these things, a quack expansion. So it's everything you know for the Welcome to, but with a bunch more added on and some degree of streamlining incorporated as a game that I still have in my collection the role of my genre one of the one of the first games actually interesting when I first played welcome to the very first time I played it I wasn't necessarily as impressed I was intrigued I played it actually in North Carolina if I'm not mistaken I was I was visiting the board game co warehouse with my partner and uh, we were looking we were looking at the warehouse he is showing me he's very into games and he's showing me this game and I was intrigued but not yet sold but then I played it more and then I played it more and I kept playing it and it's still here I still have Welcome to the Moon as well. I no longer have Welcome to Las Vegas, but I'm definitely intrigued about the concept of, of, of combining everything I have Welcome to into a single proper big box instead of the way I have it stored now, which is an absolute mess. So I'm excited to get Welcome to over here. It's my number nine over here. It's also on the lighter side, but it's on the lighter side, and I know I like it, which is why it's higher than Art Society for me. 
At number eight, we instead have Inferno. Inferno from Red Mojo Games, and this one seems very intriguing. Inferno is a game where you're going to be guiding. It's a Euro game, but it's a Euro game where you're guiding these lost souls to to hell over here in the game. You're going to be trying to guide different souls in, trying to get bring them on their journey while managing the Euro game aspect of things. So that idea of having these seven layers of hell, of having the 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 romance of, of Dante's Inferno, and having combining that with the Euro game and guiding things around, just the intriguingness of this puzzle is what has me well intrigued. It just seems different than your standard Euro game. It seems like an interesting implementation of, of almost theme within a Euro. Euros are often criticized as being th less theme less less theme to a degree, and that's often because you can replace one set of mechanisms with another. But even just this way they have these seven pits of hell, this cascading little pit that you're narrowing down, it looks like they really did a good job. Well, good is relative. We'll find out good later. But it looks like they did a... Uh, uh, they, they, they did their job of integrating theme and mechanics. The only question is whether the end result is a game that's actually worth paying attention to or something that's unfortunately forgettable. But they had me intrigued because of the concept of combining those two together. That's Inferno, my number seven. And number six, or is it eight? Or is it my number eight? And number seven over here, we have Jekyll and Hyde versus Scotland Yard. This is a follow-up to Jekyll and Hyde, a trick-taking game. This is going to be a cooperative trick-taking game, illustrated by Vincent Trade. A game already looks beautiful, uh, coming to you from Mandu Games. And this one is, like I said already, it's a trick. It's a cooperative trick-taking game, which players are going to be trying to work together to accomplish a, a set of stories, almost a set of stories and goals in this game. I like cooperative games, I like trick-taking games. I so far like the one cooperative trick-taking game I've really played, which is The Crew, I love that. Combine that with the art and, and presentation of Vincent to Trade, and I am just intrigued by the game. I don't actually know whether I'll like this one or not. There are many trick-taking games that are a hit for me, many that are a miss for me, but this looks beautiful, and again, combining mechanics, presentation, art, all those things in a game that looks very accessible. That's going to be number seven, Jekyll, Jekyll and Hyde versus Scotland Yard. At number six, we have Among Cultists, a social deduction thriller. This one is riding the top of the Essence Bill hotness charts. It's completely, like, they have, like, multiple titles in the top for whatever. They've done a great job promoting this one. This is the one people are the most excited about based on the thumbs and geek list and all that. But Among Cultists is a game that's based on the Among Us system. It's going to have players trying to engage in wandering around the board and keeping their roles hidden and potentially backstabbing others and getting in the way. It's going to be, this was a very large Kickstarter last year. They did fairly well. Again, they've been promoting this left, right, and center and doing well. They have expansions and content and everything for this game, but it's ultimately it's a hidden role game. It's going to require a slightly higher player count to maximize your experience with the game, but they basically took Among Us, the video game that became incredibly popular, and they said, let's make this into a board game, and it looks, from all accounts, it looks like they did a good job. I haven't had a chance to play this one yet, so I don't know, but that's my number six. I think we're up to number six, five, four, three, two, one. I always lose track on these lists, but my number five over here is going to be Delta. Delta from Game Brewer, this one caught my attention when it was first on Kickstarter. Game Brewer is an interesting company that I've I've tried some of their games. I don't think I don't know if they have any that have been a real hit for me so far, but they always put out things that intrigue me, but often don't put out things that intrigue me enough, and Delta may have been an exception to that. Delta intrigued me enough, although not necessarily enough to back it, but that's because I'm trying to back fewer games. But Delta, Delta has production and art and and characters. You're gonna be you're going on expeditions, you're going on journeys, you're gonna be hiring new crew to to use utilize their abilities. All of that combined with a game that just looks beautiful in this game over here. Everything in the game, just look, look at these characters, look at the art, look at the, everything just looks like a game system that I would enjoy. I've recently really been enjoying Revive a lot. In fact, one of the things I didn't say over here is but I did not include any expansions on this list anyway, even though Revive does have an expansion that I'm very excited for because, well, I like Revive a lot and I want to play the expansion, but that's neither here nor there. But the card management in games can be done really well. You combine that with a good Euro and you'll have a phenomenal puzzle. And so this one looks like it's giving you good art. I hope it's giving you good game play but we'll see but this is easily the game brewer game that i'm the most excited about from any game brewer game i think i've ever really seen it does not mean it's a good game i have not played this over here in fact none of these games are games that i've played but this over here is definitely one that i am very interested in trying out which brings us to a number four over here which is shipyard you know how i just literally said none of these games have I ever played technically i've played the original shipyard this is my number four over here. There are a few that I'm more excited for, but Shipyard is one of the first games that I actually ever played when I got into gaming. It was a hard to get game, I and mean, first is relative, but it was in the first like hundred or so. That counts as basically first when you've played like 1500 games, right? And so Shipyard from Vladimir Suchi was a game that I, I played probably before I think he was, I shouldn't say, I, don't, I was gonna say before he was like, you know, as well known as he is, but maybe I just didn't know things as well, so I'm not entirely sure. But Shipyard is, Shipyard was a, 
incredibly good game with like a double euro system as you try to create ships you're trying to effectively create ships and then pilot those ships around a, a delta you'd have a, a, map, a separate map board where you'd be piloting your ships but you're constructing them there's tiles you're cascading those tiles together to create these ships that you're then going on these journeys with and you're operating within the rondelles of the game to be able to try to balance like you know the various action economy of it and it was just so it was such a fascinating puzzle that was really enjoyable and I had in my collection for quite some time before I eventually did move on from it. And this looks like it's bringing you the same game. With tweaks, with adjustments, they are making some changes. They're bringing a solo mode to the table. They're obviously enhancing the art to no end. So I'm very excited about this one. It's one that I definitely would love to try to pick up again. It is a much older title and most of the core game, they are keeping the same. So there are tweaks, there are changes, but most of what you liked or possibly didn't like are still going to be present in Shipyard 2nd Edition by Vladimir Suchi. At number three over here, we have Civilution. Civilution would be higher if I had anything, but I have nothing to go off this game. I don't even have art for this game. I don't have a single image past the cover art for the game, but this is a Stefan Feld 4X game in theory. Is that is that the pitch over here? Because that's what it sounds like they're going for over here. But Civilution is a game which you're going to be trying to, uh, you're going to be going on an exam over here, trying to pass exams. It's a medium to heavy Euro style game. They're going to have dice selection over here. You're only going to see parts of the game the entire time you play. Again, I know the least about this and yet it still manages to be this high only because this is Stefan Feld who historically, I don't play Stefan Feld games that I don't like. I, I just, meaning not, not I refuse to. Every Stefan Feld game I've ever played, I've enjoyed. The only question is sometimes how much I enjoyed it relative to other Stefan Feld games or relative to other games in general. But combined with what he's doing here, I'm realizing now I don't see it saying 4X here, but I recall seeing a 4X thing listed elsewhere. So I could be wrong with that. could be my imagination. I don't know. We'll find out if I was right or wrong. But the idea of having a game system where you only explore parts of it every time you play, that's one of the reasons I love Vindication so much. It's one of the reasons I love uh, Expeditions from Stonemaier Games so much is because those are game systems that only show you a small component of what the game is doing every single time time you play and that has me intrigued to absolutely no end. So Stefan Feld, Civilution, this has me, has me very pulled in, it's my number three despite knowing the least about it on anything on this list. My number two is going to be Evacuation from, again, Vladimir Zucci. This is going to be coming to, me, coming to you from Delicious Games, and I think it's the theme and presentation, to make no mistake, the presentation, the art, that's also an aspect that's pulling me in. But over here, this one, the main reason this one's pulling me in is just the concept of what's happening in this game. Let me pull, pull back out over here. You're going to have two planets going on. You're going to have a planet that's slowly dying, and so you're trying to migrate everything, your population, your buildings, your production, trying to mi migrate everything over to a second planet. Just thematically alone, that's an intriguing concept. Then you combine that with the way the game looks. The game looks beautiful. Combine that with the idea that you have to kind of manage your production in the game because across four rounds of play, you have to be careful what you build and where you build it because you build on the old planet, you may not benefit from that long as, you know, things fall apart. But you build on the new planet, you may not be able to be there in time. And so you're trying to balance these different things in the game. Looks very intriguing, seems very intriguing. The one thing that has me scared as it does with any one of these systems is when you have a, a Euro game that only lasts four rounds, sometimes I am, I am grateful the, for the amount of things I get done in those games. And other times I am... Other times I only feel like the game starts in round three and that feels frustrating because I feel like the first half of the game is just setting things in motion. So I'm very intrigued. It looks beautiful. Honestly, the fact that it's above Solution for me is, again, the theme, the designer. The designer creds is a big deal. The theme, the presentation, all of that, it looks very different. I mentioned already the idea of having pasted on Euro themes and then incorporating the actual you know, mechanics into what you're doing here. And this feels like that. The fact that they have these two planets over here and you're moving things back and forth. This is not a simple, I mean, of course, you could probably retheme anything if you're creative enough. You know, you call heaven and hell and I don't know, you can do things, but it looks well done. That's going to be visualization. No, wait, that's going to be evacuation, evacuation from uh, from delicious games. Which brings me to my number one over here, the game I'm most excited about, which is going to be Planta Nubo. This is going to be designed by a few people, Michael Keller, Andreas Ode, Odenhall, and Uwe Rosenberg. And this is a game that there's not a ton of information out there yet, but there is already a full, full post over on BGG. I highly recommend reading it. And it's, it's gonna pull you into the game. And more importantly, at least for me, first of all, this game, can we talk about how I mentioned Stefan Feld already? This game looks like Bonfire. Like it has like between the uh, polyomino board placement, these little tiles that go on your central board, between this board over here, this game looks like someone took the graphic design of Bonfire and said, let's make a totally different game out of the components and design of Bonfire. That's the sense I'm getting from it. But that aside, there's a whole written blog post about this, and the main takeaway I have is the comparisons to A Feast for Odin in terms of the gameplay feel, the weight class of the game, the gameplay feel, the combination of polyomino tiles with a heavy Euro engine, this one, the com combination of Uwe Risenberg as the designer, and the, and the, and the, as one of the designers, and the comparisons to A Feast for Odin combined with polyomino tiles amongst the Euro engine, all of those things have me incredibly intrigued. Uwe Risenberg is a phenomenal designer, one of the first, uh, one of the first designers who I fell in love with their Euro games. I'd say Stefan Feld and Uwe 
Rosenberg are the pillars of my introduction and appreciation for Euros in this space. But I don't play every single one of his games. He has so many games that I still have. I have a bunch of his games I have not tried yet and I've been meaning to and I want to get to them, but his games are something so mentally invested that between Caverna and Feast for Odin and who knows what else I have on my shelf, I don't always get to play them all. But this one, this is definitely one that I want to make time for because of the comparisons to a Feast for Odin, which is an incredible game, because of the, the, the polyamina tiles, because of the general look of it, that's going to be my number one pick, Planto Nubo. And that's what we have over here for 15 games from Essen, 15 games that are coming out of Essen that had me intrigued. Again, with the exception of Shipyard-ish, sort of, none of these are games I've actually played. These are games that I want to play. A lot of the games on the Essen list were already at Gen Con. I've already talked to them. I've already been excited about them. For me, the point of this list was to try to give you something new, something different. If you are a viewer of the channel, if you are a subscriber of the channel, first of all, thank you. But I don't just want to continue to show you the exact same thing every few every few months. You've already talked about the games that are at Gen Con. Many of those will be at Essen. Many of them will be at the next convention. There's going to be packs unplugged after this. It never really ends. There's always more board games. Some of them stick around. Many don't. But it's a fun little journey to be on while we try to find all the ones that capture our hearts, our imaginations, our wallets, and our game time. In any case, until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, I hope you have a good one.